Welcome to Virginian Rehabilitation and Wellness. We are going to start today and start talking about speech pathology and when is it appropriate to refer. So my name is Victoria and I'm a speech pathologist and our outpatient clinic rehabilitation and wellness is located in Fairfax, Virginia. But we are very excited because we are going to expand to Chantilly, Virginia within the next couple months. So today I just wanted to put some information out there um, and actually talk about the four different areas that speech pathologists can work with. One of them is swallowing or eating and drinking. As an infant, we come out of our mama's belly and we are born with an innate ability to coordinate sucking, swallowing, and breathing. Unfortunately, if we enter this world too early because we're premature or have some sort of brain injury, those three things are very hard to, to coordinate. And in will come a speech pathologist in the hospital. Moving forward at around six months of age, we'd like to transition from sucking on a bottle or a nipple to eating puree foods. And some children have trouble stripping the spoon of the puree. This is again, something we can help with. Around nine months, we begin to enjoy chewables or dissolvable food in our mouth. And then right around a year, we say goodbye to bottles and we learn to drink from an open cup. We are enjoying self-feeding skills right around one and we become way more independent. So if you're having trouble with your child um, transitioning between consistencies such as puree food or liquids, this is a time to reach out to a speech pathologist for a feeding assessment. Okay, moving on to a different area, one of my favorite, voice therapy. We are all born with three organs that help us produce a voice. The first one is our lungs. That's our power source for our voice. We bring in oxygen to the lower lobes. We give off carbon dioxide for a nice strong voice. In our larynx, we have our vocal folds, our two vocal cords that come together and lightly tap to be the source of our voice. Our mouth, which are articulators, these are our lips, our teeth, our tongue, our jaw, our sinuses. This gives us the quality of our voice. Many times children will come in and the mom say, they sound like Darth Vader and they have a really low, what we call glottal fry. Or sometimes they become Minnie Mouse and their voices go super, super, super high and no one can hear them. Um, these are voice disorders that I can certainly address and other speech pathologists as well. One of my favorite is stuttering or cluttering. This is the repetition of single sounds or single words. A lot of parents will say, when should I be concerned? We therapists are always more concerned with a whole word repetition versus a single sound repetition. Meaning if the child comes in saying, I want, 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 want milk versus I whoa, 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 want milk. We want to address the whole word repetition closer to the age of three, three and a half. And if it's a single sound repetition, we can wait closer to four, four and a half. We like to have some level of maturity and the ability to control behaviors and implement some strategies before we really start working on our vocal quality. Again, we want to be building confidence in our children and strong communication skills. And we don't wanna just start out at a young age telling, the, telling them that they sound funny or there's something they need to fix about themselves. So that's voice. Um, I always tell parents, if it doesn't sound quite, quite right, um, come and see us. And the third area is speech and language. And this is, I think, the most common um, part of our field that parents question about. With speech and language, we have what we call foundational skills. The bottom building block is listening and attention skills. That's our eye contact. That's our ability to follow a direction, turn our head towards who's talking to us. So first we have attention and listening, and then we build on top of that for receptive language. That's the processing of incoming information. Somebody's saying, hey, Johnny, go get your shoes. It's time to go to school now. Please go get your lunch out of the fridge. 
processing the incoming information is important before we expect these children to express themselves, to express a want, a need, to use a sign, or to point to a picture. So let's go through some developmental milestones of what I'm looking for. At two to three months of age, babbling starts. These are single vowel sounds. Ah, ee, ooh. It's all of that cooing that makes, makes the parents just smile and kind of glow. Um, they're also starting to look at that person's face that's communicating with them. At six months, they smile. They're not smiling because they have gas bubbles and they're not smiling because something tickles them. They're smiling because they hear your voice and their, and their auditory processing system recognizes it. Eight months, we start combining syllables, dad, dad, mom, ma. By nine to 10 months, we understand, no, do not touch that, no, stop. And then right around 12 months, we begin following one to two step directions. We can do things such as point to your nose, where's your head? And we can follow directions such as wheels on the bus, Right around one year, that's where the words begin to emerge also. So we should know, I like to say two words at one year other than mama and dada. Um, textbooks say up to 10 words at a year, but the longer I do this, I've realized that as long as you've got two consistent words other than mama and dada, and you're showing progress, we're moving in the right direction. At 15 months, there's jargon or nonsensical speech such as I got that, that, yeah. They have strong sound combinations that sound like it might be something. This is great. We need to celebrate that they're making noise. And you are saying as a parent, it is so good to hear your voice to encourage more of that. At 21 to 24 months, they're pointing to pictures in books. They're speaking 20 to 50 words and they're starting to make requests such as asking for food. I want milk, more cookie. Um, closer to three years, they're joining into these nursery rhyme songs. They're following multiple step directions. And I think it's really important to kind of talk about articulation or overall speech intelligibility. We as speech pathologists have a term where we call language explosion. And somewhere between ages of two and four, it's like overnight or within a week, these children grow and expand their vocabulary to a degree where you're like, whoa, I didn't know you knew the word rhinoceros or watermelon. What we find during that time period, when the expressive language increases, the articulation or overall intelligibility takes a little bit of a nosedive. That's a normal part of development. Now, when we look at articulation, most sounds we don't start to address until we're closer to the age of five, such as the L sound. Um, Larry has a lizard, does not need to be perfect until we go to kindergarten. And the running rabbit does not need to be perfect until we are close to seven or eight years old. So under the age of five, just encourage good listening skills and celebrate all expressive language. If you're concerned, if, if the, some things that I would be concerned about or are is if your child learns a new set of five words maybe before the age of two, and then all of a sudden they're not using those words. They've totally fallen off the bandwagon. Um, another one would be that if they're not processing what you're asking for them to do, please go get your shoes. And they just kind of look at you lack of eye contact, lack of attention and listening when you're reading them books can also be some red flags. Um, these days, everybody seems to be asking about the autism screeners. Pediatricians should be doing those right around nine months. And those questions are centered around those attention and listening skills. At two years of age, I'm happy if I understand 25 to 50% of what they say. At three years, we move closer to 50%. And by four years of age, 75% to almost 100. Okay, the last area, social emotional communication. This covers the lifespan. I can tell you that the youngest I see at nine months versus the oldest I see at 89 years old. 
Social communication is our emotional link and it's our connection to other human beings. This is important stuff. As a newborn, the best example I can give you is that newborn's crying, mom picks the baby up, the baby's comforted and stops crying. At one to two months, he's smiling again at the parents. He's eye tracking to see who's in the room. At six months, he knows who a stranger is and you can actually feel the body tense up if, if a stranger picks up the baby over the parents. At nine months, they respond to their name. They're turning towards the sounds. Again, this is where the autism screeners are gonna come in and you can start asking your pediatrician if you're concerned. At 20 months, we start to be resistive to routines. Maybe, maybe mom and dad say it's time to go to bed. It's normal for your child to, to not wanna do that, to not wanna follow that direction. At 18 months, we want to see parallel play. And that is little Johnny and Mary and Emily all sitting in the living room. Maybe Mary's playing with the baby dolls, Johnny's playing with his cars, and another little boy is pushing his trains. Everybody's playing in the same space, parallel. They don't have to be interacting. Now at 18 months, we wanna to start to see some sharing and some interaction skills along with role playing, such as little Emily picks up the baby, she wraps the blanket around the baby and then feeds the baby the bottle before bedtime. Role playing becomes a really important part of communication for children. A little bit older children come and see me when they have trouble maybe turn taking. Their brother talks, they talk at the same time or they're in a classroom and they're disruptive because the teacher is talking and they're talking. Of course, listening and speech don't happen at the same time very well. Moving forward into you know middle school and adulthood, this is where presentational speech, effective public speaking skills come into play. And as a speech pathologist, we work with all kinds of presentational communication skills as the children get older. So at the end of this, I want what I want you to take away is if there's doubts or there's concern, reach out to a speech pathologist. We want to keep our children eating and drinking safely to maintain good weight and to meet their hydration needs. We don't wanna see coughing, choking, liquids coming out of their nose, wet vocal qualities, we want a nice healthy voice, that it's a good quality that everybody wants to listen to. And we want good speech and language skills, rich vocabulary, concrete word finding skills, and the ability and the confidence to express their wants and needs with others. So again, I'm Victoria. I'm a speech language pathologist from West Virginia University. So I have to say go Mountaineers to my friends on here. And then um, we work in, I work in Fairfax, Virginia at Virginian Rehabilitation and Wellness. And we are expanding to Chantilly in the next couple months, 2021. Thanks for joining today. If you have questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to us. Our phone number is 703-277-6611. Thanks so much. Have a good day, everybody.